This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program, my friend. I am truly so thankful that we can have this time together. And I want to say thank you for letting me come into your space. I know you have a lot of things that you can be doing. And the very fact that you've made time for me means so much to me. And today I want you to really get something out of this program. So say with me today, I'm going to get something brand new from the Word of God. Come on, let's say it. Make it your faith declaration. Today, I'm going to get something brand new from the Word of God. I'm believing that for you, and I'm believing it for me too. But today, we're going to return to the subject of the 91st Psalm, and I'm offering you my entire series, which is called The Protective Promises of Psalm 91. It is just so fabulous. And the subtitle says, Laying Claim to Every Promise in the 91st Psalm. And as I've been telling you, Denise and I have quoted the promises of the 91st Psalm for years and years and years. It would not be an exaggeration if I told you that we have quoted the promises of the 91st Psalm at least 10,000 times over us, over our kids, over our grandkids, over our ministry, over our partners, over our friends. My friends, we believe in these and we know that we've got to put them in our mouth in order to activate them. And that's what I'm teaching you in this series. And we've already covered a lot of material, which I know you cannot remember all of it. And that's why I want you to order the whole series. And it comes with a great study guide. And we're also offering you right now the book by Vicki Burke, which is called Help. It's dangerous out there. And the subtitle says How to Walk in supernatural protection. If you've not already ordered your copy of this book, why not? This is a book that you need. And my friends, I really want you to order it. And you can order all these things by going online or just give us a call right now. We're waiting for the phone to ring so we can serve you. And when you reach out to us, please let us know how to pray for you because we're people of prayer. We really pray for our friends and our partners. And when you let us know how to pray, we do a better job of praying. So please write us or call the number on the screen to let us know how we can begin to pray with you right now. And if you're not a partner, please pray about becoming a partner with our ministry. Our partners are heroes. They are enabling the teaching of the Bible to go to the ends of the earth. This program is coming to you because of partners. And when you become a partner, you can help this program go to somebody else. What a privilege that together we can be co-workers with God to see the Word of God go to the ends of the earth. But when you become a partner, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying welcome to the family. We're going to send you Denise's book, which is called The Gift of Forgiveness. Now, it may look small, but I'm telling you, this is a powerful little book. And we're going to send you my book, which is called Life in the Combat Zone. The subtitle says How to Survive, Thrive, and Overcome in the midst of any difficult situation. Now, I'm not prophesying a combat zone to your life. You're probably already dealing with something difficult. This book will help you get through it. And when you become a partner, we'll get this to you and we'll get Denise's book to you as our way of saying welcome to the family. But hey, reach for your Bible. And today we're going to return to the 91st Psalm. Are you ready? But let me get, begin again with a review about why we have the 91st Psalm. Israel had left Egypt and they had lived in Egypt for over 400 years and now they found themselves out in the middle of the wilderness. Well, after living in Egypt for 400 years, they were not accustomed to the wilderness. And in the wilderness, they were encountering things that they hadn't seen for over 400 years, snakes, ferociously wild beasts, enemies, all kinds of surprise attacks. And they were very uncomfortable and were tempted to be taken with the spirit of fear. So Moses wrote to them and said, hey, here are the promises of God for anyone who abides in the shadow of the Almighty. And the entire chapter is filled with divine protective 
promises that I have laid claim to and you can lay claim to as well. And that's why I'm teaching you from the 91st Psalm. But let's go to Psalm 91 verse 1 and review. It says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we've seen that that word dwelleth in Hebrew means to dwell. It means to lodge, to take up residency, or to move into a place and to stay there permanently. The words secret place for you and me describes Jesus. My friends, we have been placed into the secret place. We are in Christ. You can't get any deeper in God than that. He is our secret place. He is our hiding place. We're deeply tucked away in the person of Jesus. And if you've never called Jesus the the Lord of your life, then call us right now and we will pray with you to make him the Lord of your life. And in one moment, you'll be placed into this secret place. But this verse says, he that dwelleth in this secret place. And I think this is so important because we're not guests that come and go. Once we're placed into Christ, we dwell there. We lodge there. We reside there permanently. We're permanently tucked away in this secret place of the Most High. And Most High here is the word Elion, which describes the Supreme One with authority over all. And my friends, that is who Jesus is. He's the head of all principality and power. And when you're tucked away in the secret place inside Jesus Christ, you are complete in Him, who's the head of all principality and power. But then the verse goes on to say, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The word shadow is a Hebrew word which describes a shadow. It carries the idea of a hiding place or a shelter. And if you're in this shadow, you are sheltered, you are hidden in the shadow, but it also carries the idea of one who stays in step with the Lord. And we'll go back to the illustration which I've been giving you every day. Let's say you want to walk with me and you want to stay in my shadow. Well, the only way you're going to stay in my shadow is how? If you walk very close with me because my shadow only extends so far. And inherent in this idea is you got to stay close to me if you want to stay in my shadow. And if I move and you don't move, then suddenly you're no longer going to be in my shadow. Or if you choose to go in another direction, well, my shadow is not going to cover you way, way over there. And this is what happens to believers who stray from the Lord. They move out of his shadow. And when you move out of his shadow, you move out of his protective promises. So everything you're going to read in the 91st Psalm belongs to those who are abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. So it implies us clinging to the Lord, staying in step with the Lord, drawing near to the Lord, staying so close to the Lord that we're living in his shadow. Can you say amen to that? But then we go on and it says in Psalm 91 verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. And we have seen that in this verse, when it says, I will say of the Lord, the Hebrew actually says, I will say to the Lord. And this entire Psalm is to be a confession and a declaration of faith. These are things you're supposed to say to the Lord. I will say of the Lord, or now we know the Hebrew actually says, I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge, you're my fortress, in you I trust. And then you come to verse three which is what we covered in the last program, and I want to cover it again. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Verse 4, he shall cover thee with his feathers. Here we go. This is what I want to repeat. And under his wings shalt thou trust. Then it goes on to say, his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. But this is the promise of what God will do for anyone who abides in his shadow. But this verse says, he shall cover thee with his feathers. And as we saw in the last program, the word cover is a Hebrew word, which means to fence in, to hedge in, to cover, to overshadow, to protect, or to shut in. And in some cases, it means to inweave or to entwine. It pictures complete concealment, completely being entwined in something. It is the picture of protection and the picture of security.
So when the Bible says that he will cover us with his feathers, it means he will fence us in. He will hedge us in. He will cover us. He will overshadow us. He will protect us. He will inweave us and entwine us in his presence to such a point that we're protected and we have divine security. Say amen. My friends, that is the promise of God to anybody who abides in the shadow of the Almighty. But then in verse 4, it goes on to say, and under his wings shalt thou trust. The word under is a Hebrew word, which means below or underneath. But the Hebrew more fully states it like this. You will take refuge and confidently trust underneath his wings. And it implies the idea of somebody that's hiding behind somebody's back or hiding behind somebody else's reputation. So when you're trusting and hiding underneath his feathers and his wings, suddenly you're hiding behind God's back. You're hiding behind his reputation. He has stepped forward to protect you. But hey, Let's talk about this word wings just for a moment because this word wings is the very Hebrew word used to describe the wings of a bird. It can describe flowing garments and it can describe the wings of a cherubim or a seraphim. So let's talk about wings just for a moment. First of all, the Ark of the Covenant was covered with two angels that had wings. And between those two angels was the presence of God. So in this verse, there is an inference that we're to draw near to the very presence of God. We're to hide under the wings of his presence. And my friends, in the presence of God, there really is divine protection. But it also pictures God wrapping his wings of protection around us. It also pictures God wrapping his garments around us to conceal us and to protect us. I like to wear a robe. And when our sons were young, sometimes they would get under my robe and they would pretend that nobody could see them. And I would cover them with my robe. Well, just imagine this is what God does with his wings. It's what God does with his garments. It's what he does with his presence. He surrounds us as with a garment to supernaturally protect us. I just think that is amazing. But there's one more thing. It also speaks of the action of birds who cover their young, who cannot cover themselves. And they do this to keep them warm and to protect them from harm. And here we have a picture of the children of God. I'm talking about you and me. And like young birds, sometimes we're unable to defend ourselves. So God protects us as the birds do for their young. But again, I think most importantly is the picture of the wings of the angels on the Ark of the Covenant. And here we have the picture of you and me clinging to the presence of God, hiding under those wings, under the shadow of the Almighty. And my friends, when we do that, we literally are protected because we're hiding behind God's back and behind his divine reputation. Say amen. Wow. But then it goes on and in verse four, it says, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust, shalt thou trust. That's our part. His part is to cover you with his feathers and to put you under his wings. Our part is thou shalt trust. My friends, that's the faith part. And then it goes on to say, his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. What in the world does that mean? Well, first of all, it says his truth. Truth here is a Hebrew word which describes absolute truth, faithful truth, stable truth, trustworthy truth, unchanging truth, or my friends, we're talking about absolute truth. As long as you view the word of God as absolute truth that is unchanging and you live by it, it will be for you a shield and a buckler. The word shield is a Hebrew word which really conveys two ideas. First, it conveys the idea of a hook and secondly, a covering shield. What does that mean, a hook? It tells us, first of all, that we need to let the Word of God be hooked in our heart. It needs to be such absolute truth in our lives that it becomes a hook. We become hooked on the Word of God. It's hooked into our heart. It's hooked into our soul. And when the Word of God becomes hooked in your heart, in your soul, that is when it becomes a covering shield of defense and protection in your life. But it goes on to say, His truth shall be your shield and your Buckler. What does the word buckler mean? Well, the Hebrew word describes two things as well. A small shield or 
a traveling companion. And this is very important because here we see the picture of a shield to protect and a weapon that is to accompany those, are you ready for this? Who abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So here we have a shield to protect us and a weapon to accompany us if we're living and abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. Do you see how many reasons there are for you to live and to abide as close as you can in the shadow of the Almighty. This is God's promise of protection to anybody who abides in his shadow. God's word is a shield to those who believe it, to those who claim it, to those who boldly confess it by faith. And just as a shield protected a person, God's word, if it is absolute truth in your life, will provide protection for you along every road you travel on in life. Say amen. But so, verse 4 altogether says, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. But remember, you're supposed to personalize this. We're told in verse 2, I will say to the Lord. So let's personalize this verse. Let's say out loud, say it with me. Just look at the words on the screen. You cover me with your feathers. You put me safely under your wings. Your truth is my shield and my buckler. Say amen. But then we come to verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. But notice the first part of verse 5 says, Thou shalt not be afraid. And this word afraid means to dread or to fear. And here we have another promise for anyone who abides in the shadow of the Almighty. It says, You will not be afraid for the terror by night. The word terror here is a Hebrew word, which means dreadful fear or terror by night simply means literally by night. Well, remember, Israel was in the wilderness and they hadn't been in the wilderness for more than 400 years. And when you're out in the middle of the wilderness, you might think that it's going to get quiet at night. But in fact, at night, you become sensitive to every move. Just think about those times. For example, if you're married and your spouse goes on a trip and now you're home by yourself. Isn't it amazing how you hear every little creak, every little noise in your house, which are probably there all the time, but when your spouse is there, you don't hear them. But when you're by yourself, suddenly you hear every little creak, every little noise. It keeps you up. You wonder, what is this? What is that? Well, out in the wilderness, they were hearing the screams of animals and shrieks and all kinds of noises. And for them, it was a real terror at night. But when a believer abides in the shadow of the Almighty, we have the divine promise that we will not be sieged with a dreadful fear or terror by night. Say amen. And I want to read some verses to you that you can claim. In Psalm 3, 5, the Bible says, I laid me down and slept. I waked for the Lord sustained me. Here is a promise that you do not need to have fear at night. You can sleep. Or how about Psalm 4.8? I call Psalm 4.8 my sleeping medication. I quote it every night before I go to bed so I'll sleep well. And here's what it says. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou, Lord, truly makest me dwell in safety. Or how about Psalm 56, verse 3, which says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. My mother taught me that verse when I was a little boy. Or how about Psalm 127, verse 2? It's vain for you to rise up early or to set up late or to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. God wants to give you sleep. Or how about Proverbs 3, verse 24? When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. But now we go back to Psalm 91, verse 5, which says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. And my friends, I'm going to tell you, not to be afraid is already by itself an unspeakable Blessing, But this is God's promise of protection during the night. You don't have to be afraid during the night if you're abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. But then verse 5 goes on to say, no, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. That word arrow is a Hebrew word which describes an arrow or a dart which pierces. 
The words that flieth is a Hebrew word, which means that flieth, and it refers to both speed and surprise. And notice it says by day, which in Hebrew means in the daytime. And here this is God's promise of protection for any attack that comes during the daytime. The truth is there were all kinds of destructions during the daytime in all kinds of different circumstances. But in these verses, we find that sometimes things come by night, sometimes they come by day, sometimes they come in darkness, sometimes they come in noonday. But my friends, attacks in the middle of the day were outright attacks. Have you ever been under just an outright visible attack? That's what this is. The arrow that flieth by day. And whether they came at night or whether they came at day, their purpose was to bring a great impact of hurt and destruction. But according to these verses, if you dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, these things will have absolute no power in your life because when you live under the shadow of the Almighty, you live in His shelter, you live under His protection. My friends, it is a hiding place. There's no safer place on the planet than to live and abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Now, we all know people that walked with the Lord at one time. They came to Christ, and really, they're in the secret place. They are in Christ. But now they've walked away from the Lord. They're not walking with Him as they once did. Let's say it like that. They're still Christians, but they're not really walking close to the Lord. They've walked out of the shadow, and therefore, they cannot lay claim to these promises. And this is why I want you to understand, these promises do not automatically come to every single Christian. They come to Christians who are abiding in the shadow of the Almighty, which means you've got to stay in step with the Lord, spend time with the Lord, cling to the Lord, live under His wings, cling to His presence. And when you're in His shadow, His shadow falls over your life and it extends to you divine protection. But I want us to personalize this verse, Psalm 91 verse 5, which says in the King James Version, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. But this is supposed to be a personal confession. So let's personalize it and say, just look at the words on the screen and say it out loud with me. I will not be afraid for the terror by night. I will not be afraid of the arrow that flieth by day. And the reason you have no need to be afraid is because you are living and abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. And in that place, there is divine protection. I'm out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. Psalm 91 is packed full of protective promises for every believer who abides in the shadow of the Almighty. The Bible promises that when you live under God's mighty shadow, no evil can touch you and no plague or sickness will come near you. In fact, if you live under God's mighty shadow, angels are assigned to watch over you. In this insightful series, Rick will answer questions like, how do you dwell in the shadow of the Almighty? How does God deliver you from the snare of the fowler? How is it possible for no sickness to come near you? This 10-part series, The Protective Promises of Psalm 91, laying claim to every promise in the 91st Psalm, will show you how to lay claim to these protective promises. And it is available in digital or physical format, starting at just $20. In addition, we want to offer you Vicki Burke's powerful book, Help, It's Dangerous Out Here. In this book, you'll learn the secrets to avoiding deadly mistakes, the intentional steps you can take to overcome fear, and the keys to living with immunity from the devil's attacks. You'll also learn how to operate with an unshakable confidence in God's supernatural protection. Today, this book can be yours for $15. Don't miss this bundle offer of the 10-part series, The Protective Promises of Psalm 91, laying claim to every promise in the 91st Psalm. And the book, Help, It's Dangerous Out Here. And be sure to request your free design print of Psalm 91 or visit renner.org to download a copy. Call the number on your screen or visit renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and I'm so excited that today I can come to you from our Tulsa, Oklahoma headquarters building, and I'm standing in the production department where we produce so many resources for people who live all over the ends of the earth that reach out to us for teaching that they can trust. And I know that's the call of God on our life. Proverbs 10:21 says, 
The lips of the righteous feed many, and our job is to feed many the wonderful Word of God. And right now, we're wanting to retire the debt on this building so it frees up funds so we can take the Bible to further places across the world. If you're part of the giving team, thank you. And if not, please pray about becoming a part of our giving team so we can take the transforming truths of God's Word to people all around the world. And together, we'll retire the debt on this building and it will free up finances so we can reach those that are crying out for answers from God's Word. I want to say thank you for being with me today, and I believe this teaching is so important that we have designed Psalm 91 very beautifully like this, and we want you to have a copy of it. Now, if you have a printer at home, you can just go to our website and download it and print it yourself. But if you don't have a printer at home, then call us right now or email us, and we'll send you a paper version of this beautifully designed Psalm 91. We'll send it to you, and then you can put it in a frame like I have framed mine. I really want the words of the 91st Psalm to be in front of you all the time because they are your protective promises. And I want you to order the whole series, which is called The Protective Promises of Psalm 91, laying claim to every promise in the 91st Psalm. My friends, it is just so wonderful to see what God extends to you and to me, but you've got to know what it is so you can claim it. And it comes with a study guide. And friend, I worked so hard on this particular study guide. It fed me, and I know it's going to feed you. And I want you to have it so you can read all the information while you're seeing or hearing the whole series. And please, please, please order Vicki Vicki Burke's wonderful book, which is called Help. It's dangerous out there. The subtitle is How to Walk in Supernatural protection. You can order all these things by going online right now at our website or just call the number on the screen. And when you reach out to us, please let us know how to pray for you. But I'm going to pray for you right now. So put your hand on your heart and let's pray together. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that we do not need to be afraid of any terror at night or for the arrow that flies by day because you say if we abide under the shadow of the Almighty, we are protected. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.